Welcome, please sit down. Lecture number 11 in this row of 12 new and one summary lectures. So we're getting at the end. I start today with this little snapshot from this computer since this software is not running here. This is this panel check software. That's not syllabus for use. You don't have to worry about it. It's just part of the story about this analysis of variance business that we are looking into last time and today again. This is our TV data, which is exemplified here, which is also in one of our R packages, and you will have, have, have had the chance to play around with it. Just to recap, we have 12 different combinations of TV pictures. It's kind of 12 groups or 12 treatments, if you want. And then we have a number of uh, expert uh, judges to uh, score different uh, vision uh, attributes on these screens. And uh, so for each of these attributes, people at Bang & Olufsen and at many other companies doing exactly similar stuff. Um, they would do analysis of variance to compare the means of those products that they are testing. They use human panels to do product development and product testing. And so they score, they want to compare the means. It's in a way basic stuff. But the way to do it in an intelligent way is by means of the right version of analysis of variance. Because in this way, you compare the means using the right way to study the noise, in a way. So, uh, and the reason why we call it analysis of variance is, to repeat, because we compare the means by finding the variability between means as a measure of how different are the means from each other. That's the variability that we're looking at. And then we compute some variances, just as we, in a way, are becoming used to in this course, some so-called residual variabilities. We compute them in all the stuff we've been doing, actually, residual variabilities, to use as the noise measure when we actually look at the signals. That's the whole thing. How do we compare signals with noise? By means of t-statistics, f-statistics, maybe, maybe yet other statistics. That's what we are doing. Last time we did one-way analysis of variance. Today we'll do two-way analysis of variance. And hopefully you get the feeling that there are more out there. And we have a couple of courses you could take to take you to three and multi-way type analysis and all sorts of challenges and interesting issues around that issue. In this course, we take it at one and two. And actually, in this software, there is a ah, bugger. I'm off here in a sec, so I don't have to close uh, my Facebook down. I, I just put up a news here. This was from, uh, oh, sorry about that. Uh, let me rapidly, how do I close that down? Let me just get out of here soon, rapidly. Um, here, two way and over, one rep. That's where we are today. There we are. And let's get back. I'm unreachable on my Facebook like that. Good. Two-way analysis of variance. That's where we are today. We are already in the middle of the introduction. So let's jump into it. You saw this picture. This is the same picture as last time. This is, I admit, a pretty old picture. These are not the type of screens that they're testing these days. Uh, but I assure you, every day there isn't a single day at the site in Struer where they do not do tests of that kind. Uh, either with the car in their site, with testing the car audio stuff that they're developing very su successfully or other stuff. But this is exactly the type of screens that was used in the data set that we share in the R package. So that's coming from that exact data. So that's the going with the old data. We could zoom in here to uh, identify exactly 
we could just to uh, clarify where we are now um, because I already told you there are many ways multi-way situations and this is a really a more than two-way data set but there are relevant two-way sub selections of this data that we can have a look at so let's zoom in on just one of the four pictures one of the two repeats and then let's focus on the sharpness and if i do that and here's the r code you can go and copy this r code and you would be able to produce exactly this little data set which is a subset a snapshot of the data set it's about sharpness so those are sharpness scores for one particular picture one of the one of the replicates given for three different groups, three different treatments is our generic term for this thing. And then it's given by eight test persons. And this is where we dwell on the difference between today and last time. Last time, one-way analysis of variance, the situation would have been that I had 24 persons in play. It could be in, in this business, it, that's what you do when you do consumer tests, actually. Then you often, maybe sometimes, uh, in, in, the, in, uh, uh, in clinical trials by the pharmaceutical companies, they most often do the so-called independent samples design or completely randomized designs where you have to give some patients one treatment and other patients the other treatments, right? So that would correspond to having a data table like this, but having been produced from 24 people. That would be what we did last time, just to make the link. The difference today is now it's the same eight people that enters into the group. So we still have the three groups here that we are interested in comparing. It's still the same purpose. I want to compare the means for these TVs. But the thing is, the table is on not only one way, the table is in fact two way in a meaningful way, right? Because I have a person here, I could average this person, I have a person here. So the table has a meaningful two way structure, right? And that's where, but that's not for today, that's for later in your life. Actually, as you saw, I zoomed in here. So the real data actually had a table like this for all of the four pictures. So we actually have a three way and actually, I had two repeats. So it's a four-way data table, actually. The real data here, which can be taken care of by our panel tech. It's not rocket science, but you need one class more to be able to deal with that. So, but the good start is here with one and two-way, and this is not ridiculous starts. One and two-way situations occur very often, and that's where many people actually stick when they analyze because they didn't take class two. Sometimes they should have taken class two, but the one or two ways are pretty okay to, to begin with. So in a way, we're back with the data, toy data of last time. At least we could be there. It's just the number of groups. I take the smallest possible number of groups larger than two to make it different from what we did a few weeks back, where we started two groups, independent and dependent. Today we study more than two, so I take the example with three. And then I assume, and that's the other generic name we use, we call those blocks. So block is a generic term. In, in the TV data, blocks were persons. But blocks and, and treatments were the different TV sets, right? But treatments and blocks, these are the generic terms for what we're really interested in, and then sort of the, the individuals or whatever that can be, it can be different things actually, but uh, sometimes persons, sometimes animals, sometimes countries, sometimes whatever. So that's what we call it. We discussed one way versus two way. We discussed, let me emphasize that again. These two situations that I repeat represents two different relevant ways that we could carry out such investigations and both approaches exist right in clinical trials sometimes we have to do the independent design where some people get some treatment because you get only one try right 
If you investigate less critical things like testing consumer goods, uh, things like that, or quality, I mean, you can have the same persons test and try the different things without big effort or uh, costs. So, but also, actually, in some medical trials, you do prefer to do, and then they would call them crossover trials. Crossover meaning that a person crosses over from one treatment to the other treatment. Or one nutritional diet, if you do those big dietary studies as they do at KU, former KVL, with Anna Estrup and others uh, heading those research uh, projects, they would always do crossover trials. So one person will get one diet for a period and then a washout period or a break. And then you come back and then you do the other diet or the third diet if there are more. And then you would test, you would have a blocked design. Blocked designs are good when they are possible. Why are they good? Same reason why a paired design is good compared to an ind two sample independent design a few weeks ago. It's exactly the same setting, right? The, the only difference here is that I couldn't talk about a paired design because pair means I have two things that are pair. Now here I have three things and then we don't call it pairing, then we call it blocking. But it's the same thing, right? It's just, I have, I have tried three different things on the same person or on the same block. And the benefit would be that if the blocks are different, and people in medical trials often are, we saw it with the sleeping medicine example back then. Some people generally react a lot, some people generally don't react a lot. There is an individual variability that I will take out of the equation, so to say. I mean, I, people become their own controls when you do uh, when you do uh, designs like this, right? So the individuality that otherwise would blur the signal, if you do an independent design, you can take that out of the, of the question here. Let's have a look. Some of this is going a bit rapid because <laughs> you'll see uh, a presentation today which to a large extent, in a way, is almost a copy of what we did last week. Uh, just with this extra, two-way thing on top of it, right? The question, I said it already, is the same as last week. Is there a significant difference in means between the three groups? Actually, we could also ask the other question, and we'll get back to it. Are there a significant difference between the blocks? Now, that's not why we did the study in the first place. So the main question would still be, when uh, Bang & Olufsen do the study, it's because they're interested in the TVs. It's not because they once again want to know about their expert assessors. They know all about those guys. They don't need to know that again. Uh, so they want to know about the TVs. But you could ask the question about the blocks also. And we use analysis of variance with the usual assumption. We'll get back to it, the normality assumption. The toy data in R. Let's see observations, treatment, blocks, and then we can do the plot, and then let's try to see what we get out of that. And then the R. We tend to like box plot, but be careful now in how you interpret these plots. These are just explorative plots. And they give a pretty neat picture of what's going on, at least. They show us more or less the means. Formally, we see the medians, but uh, very often they are not too different from each other. Um, however, we should be careful about the interpretation here, right? Please remember that when I look at, for instance, the treatment box plots here. Because I did a box plot, this is where I do the plot command that gives me the box plot. I do treatment comma response. Um, the variability that I'm looking at within each treatment group is actually 
not only residual variability, it's also block variability, right? Because uh, the, the different blocks are there also. I mean, that's not wrong. We just have to remember that that's what we're looking at. So it's a bit difficult to use this. I mean, this one is not, we're not so much in doubt. Treatment one here for sure seems to be at a lower level than the other two. I'm not so much in doubt there. However, comparing these two, I should be careful here. It's, it's still explorative. Because I don't know what the noise error, what the noise variability really is, because I'm not looking at it. I'm looking at the block and the error in the joint thing. I don't know really what the error is. So I'll have to do the analysis to find out about that. we'll have to learn to do the analysis. But before we do that, I am still playing with you if you want to play with me. Do we need a bit of mood? Oh, that's a new one. Nice and simple one there. Thanks for that. Yeah. Are we ready? One more. There we are. I feel like just uh, hanging on to this uh, experience here. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, become more serious. Somehow I managed not to have the sound, but maybe that's okay. Well, 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 well. Whereas I last time expressed a certain understanding of you choosing that answer, I would have expected you not to choose it this time. The basic purpose of analysis of variance is based on a model expressing that means are different because we want to compare the means. So let's have a look.